Hello community. I got a lot of questions. How does those things work? How does Bing AI or Bing Chat work? Chat GPT or Chat GPT Plus? Or if you work with OpenAI APIs, the GPT-4 interface? How does Bart work? How does Factor Database integrate? Can you explain this? Well, I try. So today I want to show you the inner workings of a transformer. And a transformer is the main engine that currently empowers all LLMs, all large language models. And I want to show you in a visualization the self-attention mechanism in a transformer. Because if a transformer is the engine, the self-attention mechanism is the fuel, the power, the intelligence that makes the whole system work. Now, Currently, we have a lot of beautiful LLM models, all transformer-based models. And the question is, how does the self-attention mechanism work inside of those models? Have some models a different self-attention mechanism? Is it better? Is it higher performant? What makes them different? For a, for a particular job, should I choose another model? Is it the weights that a model have, or is it their layer structure? Is it their general structure? What makes them perform? Is it the training data set? Is it the layer structure? Is it the self-attention hats? What is the performance even before I start to fine-tune it? And how can I optimize the fine-tuning? Why do some models work great in one area and completely fail in other areas? Now, try to give you an answer. If you look at the LLMs today, the conversational LLMs, this is here from starting May 2023, the ranking of several thousand users. There's this beautiful chat, lmsys.org arena, where you have LLMs you can compare and you can evaluate. If you want, go there and experience and find your model that you like and check it out for your particular task. You see, of course, the big. GPT-4 or chat GPT, and then you have the Vicuna, the Koala with 13 billion trainable parameter and so on. So we have a lot of models and you have maybe a company or you have a business idea, you wanna have a startup. So which model should you choose? Should you go for the commercial big GPT models that are really expensive or should you build your own model? let's just say, starting with 13 billion trainable parameters and up. Should you pre-train it and then fine-tune it? Or should you take a model that has been pre-trained and only apply a specific fine-tuning? So in short, which LLM model solves your problem? Very easy introduction today. I have a video where I explain to you that the GPT model and the BERT model they all are based on one common architecture, and this is the transformer model. If you want, in this video, there's a very short introduction. But be aware that the transformer architecture is patented by Google, United States patent here, attention-based sequence of transduction neural networks. So if you want to use this, normally, if you have here a patent owner, you would need to obtain a license from the patent holder. And this would involve paying a fee or royalty. Currently, to my knowledge, Google does not ask for a specific fee. If we want to have a deep dive into a multi-head sense attention mechanism of a transformer network, this is the video for you. But if you just have five seconds time here, I explain what is self-attention, what is an attention hat, and multiple attention hat in self-attention. How do they work together? But you know, there's one basic information we all take for granted, that each attention hat in a layer of an architecture attends to different aspects of the input sequence, allowing our LLM or ChatGPT or GPT-4 model to capture different parts of relationship between tokens. And a token can be a piece of a word or a pixel in an image, whatever you have. So by using multiple attention at in parallel, the model can capture a wide range of complex dependencies 
between the tokens and generate more expressive representation of the input sequence. And up until now, I never questioned this. Is this true? Now, there's a beautiful new publication, May 4th, 2023. Here, where exactly they now have a visualization of the attention mechanism within Transformer. And we can learn a lot of from those insights. But even more important, if you want to have a deep dive, yeah, this is the archive preprint I just showed you. There is here this particular piece of information where I would like to draw your attention to. Attention with a global view of transformer attention. From Harvard University and Google Research, of course, you have a Google repo and an interactive demonstration I will show you in a second. But if you go there, this is really a highly interesting way to learn something. Now, let's start with the general knowledge. You have a sentence. The sky is blue. And you expect a high attention score between the words sky and blue. Now, to compute the attention, as you know, we perform a transformation of each input segment, for example, a word in a sentence, or if we have a vision or an image, we have a patch of a group of pixels into a corresponding query and key vector. At a high level, we know that the attention between two words or between two image patches in an image can be viewed as a function of the dot product, a mathematical formula between the corresponding query vectors and the key vectors in a specific mathematical vector space. This is what we know. But now comes the interesting part that this group here, Harvard, Google, had now for each attention head in the transformer, for each attention head in each layer, they had now this specific visualization. So they transform a set of input sequences into their corresponding query and key vectors and create a joint embedding vector space in a high dimensional vector space. You notice we have done this on a 768 dimensional vector space or 1024 dimensional vector space. And in this joint embedding space, as you know, the distance turns out to be a reasonable proxy for the attention weight itself. Because the query key pairs with a high attention, like sky and blue will generally be closer together given their embedded vector representation in a high dimensional vector space. So let's have a look at this. You have here an input sentence. Let's stay with some verbal input. The sky is blue. You have here your query vector, your key vector, and you have here then the transform, the dimensional reduction. You know, we have TSNA, we have PCA, and we have UMAP. And then we get a joint um, embedded vector space. Now, if you're not familiar, PCA, Principal Component Analysis, TSNA, a T-distributed stochastic neighbor embedding is a nonlinear advancement of PCA. And if you really want to go with a high qualitative nonlinear technique, I use more or less only UMAP uniform manifold approximation and projection. This is based on an advanced mathematical algorithm, which is itself based on some insight in the mathematical topology of spaces, but this would be too out of the scope of this video. So my recommendation, use UMAP. Beautiful. If you want to learn about UMAP, this is a one minute video that explains UMAP to you. If you want to have an advanced mathematical understanding of a parametric UMAP algorithm, I have this video for you. And if you want to see the complexity in a three-dimensional vector space based on results of a 1024-dimensional vector space representation, I have this video for you. So, the authors of the studies, and here's again the reference here, they have now this representation of tokens of, of, of query and key vectors in a mathematical vector space they constructed. And they say now very easily, the distance is a proxy for the attention. So if you have here a small distance between sky is blue, so we know that blue refers to the object, the sky in the sentence. We have a high attention score between those two elements. And 
if we take two different uh, semantic elements like the and blue, you see you have here in the mathematical representation a big distance in the vector space. So we assume a low attention of those elements. And now here from the study here, a very insightful result. Look here. You have here simply here an image and you have an image with a gradient from black to gray. And now you, if you want, you have here now a tokenization of this image. You have certain areas that are your visual token. And we are talking here about vision transformer. We apply the same transformer technology to vision analysis, to image analysis. And as you can see here, this is our token. And if you construct a vector space, and we are now in a two-dimensional vector space, so we have here an X and a Y axis, you see here that similar patches go together. You see here, if you look here at layer zero, head nine, that this here is now the vector space distribution of each specific image token, if you want, in relation to all the other tokens or the self-attention of the image token. And you see here, you have here all the light gray, you have the medium gray, and you have here the dark pixels. So they all go beautifully together. And now the result that they found, if you look now in each layer of the architecture of the transformer, and in each layer you have multiple heads, and you look now at each head, you find out, for example, here, this is a quote, we discover one head, layer zero, head 10. Well, in the description, it's head nine, so some little inconsistencies, but never mind. Aligns the black and white image token based on brightness. So in the layer zero, for example, the head number nine here really looked specific here for a brightness sequence in the available tokens to the system. So you see, when I ask, hey, is it really true that our heads focus on specific elements in a sentence, in an image, in a piece of audio? Yes, we find here now, interestingly, with this new study, a visual confirmation. Another example here from this study. You have here now not a monochrome, but you have here a polychrome. And you have now here again, you make your tokens and you have here, for example, this embedded token and you calculate the self-attention to all other polychrome tokens in this image. And you see again what happens. You have a clustering of similar terms. You have here the light green, light orange, the blue one. So you see this is really that we say, or as they said, Another head, layer 11, head 11, yeah, that's right, aligns the patches based on you. So the data set contains color and brightness gradient images in all orientation, and we see similar patches cluster together in the mathematically constructed, calculated joint embedding space, regardless of their position in the original image. So we have now from this two-dimensional image space, if you want, we create now a new advanced mathematical object, also a two-dimensional vector space. But now this vector space is a little bit more intelligent, if you want, because it has clustered together what belongs together. And one of the heads, of the multiple heads in this architecture said, hey, I focus on you on one particular characteristic of my data set. And this is amazing. And if you think that this is only valued for visual transformers, you can have here the normal transformers that we use for conversational AI. Here again, you have here now, they found here in this particular case here, the layer two at number zero, you see here the attention. And if you now look here closer, for example, this one, this one here, if you want, is here the embedded space where sandstone is here one key characteristic word. And if we have the sentence, we have here the sentence here on the right hand side. In the mountain range, there is sandstone from the Triassic period, which contains quartz. One sentence. 
And now let's assume we have already our embedded vector space created here again, as they show in a two-dimensional space, show you later in a three-dimensional vector space. They can now identify exactly where each token or each word here in our case of the sentence is and where it is related to. And remember, closeness is related with here the attention weights. What belongs together goes together here in this intelligent vector composition of here our verbal tokens. Highly interesting study, have a look at it. They have an interactive demo, but for now more than 20 hours, I try to get access, but as you can see, I just get an error. This visualization requires many megabytes and may take up to a minute. So after 20 hours trying to get access to their simulation, but I could show you this in real time. Unfortunately, I suppose there were not expecting that so many people want to see this because this is exactly what you see here. This is here from the interactive demonstration. If you have this sentence, you can then really choose one specific layer and one specific hat and look at the characteristic what is going to happen. So I hope when you see this video, I leave you the link to this interactive visualization that you can make it work and you can input here and you can play around. As I told you, projection, you go please with UMAP and with the model. You have Vision Transformer and Bird models. They have a GPT-2 model also, but I think GPT-2 is not actual anymore of such importance. Let me explain this to you from another perspective. Let's say you are chat GPT and you have now the task to make a sentence. And what you have, your machine, you see a mathematical object, this R embedding vectors in of our specific tokens in a vector space. So you as chat GPT, you are more or less a mathematical kind of <laughs> agglomeration of, of formulas. You operate on a vector space, and in this vector space, you have vectors that are embedded in this vector space, and each vector represents a token, for example, a piece of a word, or maybe even a complete word. And now I come here and I say, beautiful, and now I ask you, what do you know about code for AI? So, what you do? You are chat GPT, you have a beautiful vector space, you have been pre trained. For, for I don't know how many months on thousands of GPUs. So you have your vector space and I have here X, Y, and Z axis to show you that this is a three-dimensional space. And there you have a token. And this token is now given my query, the code for AI. This is here the name of your specific token of your specific embedded vector in the vector space. And just to show you, if you want to have from this node here in this system here, the mathematical coordinate system, this, for example, would be it. This is how you as ChatGPT see here my question about code for AI for this term. This is the position of this term. And now you know what belongs together goes together here also in the distance of a vector space. Just to tell you, if you go, for example, here to OpenAI, and you pay for the embeddings, and you have here the model text embeddings other 002, you know that you have a specific tokenizer and you have an output dimension. And the output dimension of this vector here, of this vector code for AI, is 1536 dimension. So I will have here 1536 rows where each row is one output dimension of a mathematical object of a vector space, GPT-4 or JetGPT or other constructed, and where we have now to find the nearest location. Let's have a look at this. So let's say this is now, you're still JetGPT, this is your node, and you see here vectors that are close by. Beautiful, brilliant YouTube channel. And now you construct as chat GPT an answer given the mathematical set in your vector space. 
And of course, you come up with the idea code for AI. And the next nearest is beautiful, is it beautiful. Next nearest, brilliant. Next nearest here is YouTube. And then furthest away, channel. So you see, this is now in a simplified version, I know, but just to make it visually attractive for you. This is how an answer is generated by ChatGPT. You do a reconstruction of a mathematical object or of millions of mathematical objects in a calculated vector space. It is as easy as this. Now, of course, if we have here only the name of my channel, in ChatGPT, you have one, two million, 10 million other vector or embedded vectors and whatever, depending on your tokenizer, depending on your specific token, depending on the training data set that those words were inputted here in the pre-training phase of GPT-4. So you can imagine that GPT's vector space, so our GPT-3.5 Turbo vector space here is located here, for example. And this is the size. And here at the border, you know, we have those semi-permeable membrane where we have our input, our prompt engineering, our ICL, or however you want to call this input. And we have an input length of 4K to 32K token. And now a lot of questions here from my viewer were about here also the kind of embedding. Now I assume here that this chat GPT vector space, I don't know, I assume we are operating here in a vector space with 2048 dimension. Now, does it have to be exactly the same vector space in an external commercial vector database or in an external vector store you need for your task? No, of course not. You can buy, I've seen from commercial vector stores where you can buy 10, 20 different embedding schemes from, I don't know, a low dimension to high dimension. So whatever you have the money you can afford, you can buy there. So this is really a business for profit, <laughs> as they say. But just to make you understand, all oh, those vector stores and vector databases and lang chain objects operate outside of the chat GPT or GPT-4 vector space or from the self-attention mechanism. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, there should be something. Oh, yeah. Next point was about questions you had. Can I convert um, vectors, embedding vectors, from, I don't know, 2,000 dimension to a 1,000 dimension? Of course. A vector space is a mathematical object, and it's objects, you can have a lot of formulas that you can reduce the dimension. I just showed you UMAP for dimensionality reduction, where the information context, the relation between each vector is more or less tried to preserve it. Of course, if you lose 1000 dimension, you lose information content. But this is up to now the parametric UMAP, one of the best methodologies to keep the content of our vectors, even in a low dimensional vector space, valid. So yes, there are a lot of mathematical operations and you can use a lot of different embeddings and embedding structure and embeddings dimensionalities. A mathematician can convert everything into everything if you give him a complete mathematical set. And this now, as I've seen by some commercial vector stores, of course, they don't want it. You get everything out of them because yes, they are a commercial enterprise. So it depends what you get, what you pay. But on a theoretical level, you can use in your vector store here a 1000 or a 768 dimensional representation of the training data set, of the words, of the tokens in the vector database. No problem. Because any operation that you perform here is performed within this mathematical space of a 768 dimensional vector space. And just the output is taken. So do not misinterpret that you have to have 
chat gpt's embedding and this is the one and only solution because it is not you can convert vector space representation under some mathematical conditions into each other no problem so this is about vector databases vector store dimensionality transformation which embedding set you should buy you can operate here if you are able to convert them with almost anything beautiful length chain yes i have a specific video on length chain and i just wanted to show you where is it here a lot of questions about inside here uh, a vector store or inside here uh, a vector representation look it is easy this is from umap i constructed from thousand dimension here a three-dimensional vector space where i had some clustering going on and you can see here this is our 3d dimension of here all the different vectors and i have here the endpoint of the vector and you can find here here for example the sea level the climate change small island coral reefs you can identify here topics that go together so you see whatever you operate in vector store it is mathematically very easy and very simple so this was about length chain and everything connected to vector store embeddings what else yeah if you do not want to do this i have here this uh, video where i show you well you can upgrade to multi i when you update a vector database you don't need a vector database converted to an ai i show you here in this video how you do multi ai then all of this is not necessary for you but of course you have to know how to design systems how to pre-train system how to fine-tune system how to write a hopeful and optimized code sequence so if you're into this and you do not know this video maybe there are some new ideas for you beautiful anyway be aware now we have just talked about the mathematical representation in a vector space but it is not only the vector embedding of your specific token but it is also of course the content itself a system is trained on or you fine-tune it on because if the you have a model i don't know that has only been trained on physics and now you have a question about medicine this system cannot answer you because it has the content it was trained on it was optimized on it does not fit with the the query you suddenly have for the system and this is the system why systems why like chat gpt4 they are trained more or less on the complete internet so it can answer more or less at least in simple terms every topic you ask it but if you have a problem if you have a specific problem in your company you do not need chat gpt or gpt4 or i don't know bart or whatever comes up because your problem can be maybe solved when you build your own ai your own llm with your specific traded training data that you can even pre-train it or if you just want you can only fine-tune it with some specific methodologies until you are satisfied with the performance of the system so you see chat gpt is good for everybody for everything on a medium level but if you have for example in medicine or you have specific applications in your company i would almost recommend and design your own ai system optimize it for your specific task train it pre-train it on your specific data set and if you want a, a multi-topic llm or a cross-section llm a multidisciplinary llm then you can start with fine tuning on different topics this saves you money saves you time but of course you have to know how to code it how to integrate it while let's say chat gpt or microsoft offers you a solution that you just have to pay them so what is great if you are a little bit more on the professional side we have now with this new methodology a visualization because you know the number of the layers 
and the number of the attention head in a transformer-based architecture is exactly the hyperparameter that when we code those systems that we can play with. We can increase it, decrease it. We can tune it for our best performance for a given task. It's always for a given task. So increasing now the number of layers and attention head can make the model, of course, more expressive, but it can also increase the computational cost and the training time. And if you have to pay, I don't know, $50,000 or $300,000, this makes a difference. So now with this methodology, and I have to use it myself in the next week and see how the degree of optimization I can achieve, but just for you, I can now see in real time visualization the attention head performance, what each attention head more or less is doing. Give from here, you have an open LLM model or a BERT model, the encoder stack, or here with LLM, you have the decoder stack for my specific task. So I am I'm myself interested in how much can I now tune here the number of layers and the number of attention head in each layer, given that I have now, as I told you, for example, in the black and white image, that you see that one head is already performing the task maybe that you're interested to do. So you do not need three additional layers with, I don't know, 12 attention at each. So you see this optimization process based on a visualization, I personally think has a high potential if you are into coding and if you're a little bit affine to technology that you can build your own model. But I will definitely try now to optimize and this means to minimize the complexity of the architecture of my LLM models to increase the performance. So those were the questions here at the very beginning. How does the self-attention mechanism work inside of those models? What makes them different to weight, so the attention that we had, the structure, the layers that we had, the number of heads? What makes them perform? And why are some great in one area and fail and otherwise? And I hope I've given you an instrument, a new instrument you can try out now on your particular model. And maybe if you're new, a kind of first understanding how self-attention works, attention weights, the structure, the performance, what it is based on. I hope I've given you some insights. And if you are interested in maybe the next topic and some additional reading, um, we will focus on data lakes because I had so many questions about vector databases and everything about data. And I noticed that a lot of my viewers are not really familiar with data lakes, delta lakes, modern technology for data because a database in itself is an object of the past. So there's a Really interesting here, um, Stanford and Cornell University, April 20, 2023. Language models enable simple system for generating structured views of heterogeneous data lakes. And this is highly interesting because if you're in a company or if you work for a company, the company may have the data in SQL uh, in a database, may have it in, in open data lakes. You will have heterogeneous data formats how you bring all the company data together to then design a large language model and LLM and AI system for a particular task for this company depends heavily on the data that the company provides you and data lakes. And if you know uh, the development for years now with Databricks, they work here on data lakes, the evolution to Delta lakes, and now even the next step, the theoretical solution is here you can integrate data lakes into higher complexity delta lakes that make it really easy to operate with different ai mechanisms on top of this but this would be the topic of the next video but if you're interested to read about this and if you want to prepare for upcoming data structures when you approach a company i think this is an interesting topic to read i say thank you it was a little bit longer today I tried to cover a lot of questions I received, and I hope I provided you some deeper insights into the self-attention mechanism, the number of layers, the number of attention that we need in our transformer architecture when we have an LLM.
This means a transformer for our conversational AI. And next time I have a new topic for you. I hope to see you soon.